Hello, how are you? I hope you're good. Welcome to today's video. I have lost so much footage. Do you know when I started this? 11th of February. <laughs> I've started this on the 11th of February. Hello, welcome to this challenge vlog thingy experiment. <laughs> I'm here to test something. Um, I'm going to be refilming a part of it because I have the me talking to you footage, the, not the screen recording, because since then I had multiple computer crashes and some of the stuff got lost, but hopefully I have like enough to still make this a thing. Today's video is basically testing how my personal taste matches or clashes with Goodreads overall average rating. So I wanted to go through most of the books that I, or all of the books actually, that I had on my shelves, then sort them by the average rating and see what are the highest rated books does the Goodreads crew and people who use Goodreads think that are the best books that I own and then read and see how much I agree with them and see what we learn. So first of all, I have went and made sure that all of my books that I own were on the Goodreads app. Currently, it would look a little bit different, but this is what we had back then. <laughs> After that, I went on to my Goodreads and I put two variables in G shelves, which means that books that are on my shelf and um, want to read, which means that those those are unread books. I had a couple of rules of what I kind of wanted to do. So the first one that came up, which I was kind of expecting and dreading at the same time, and um, yeah, it's it's a it's a chonker, it's a big boy, and we sometimes are scared of that. Like she doesn't always like that, so I didn't mean it that way. Anyway, <laughs> um, that was the Way of Kings. The first one actually comes up as the Way of Kings Part Two, which is the second half of the first book because the books books are so big they are split into two. Hurrah! The average rating of that is four point seven nine, which is amazingly high for a book that also has a lot of ratings. Um, then we have Oathbringer, which is from the same series, and The Way of Kings Part 1. So I've decided to go ahead and put The Way of Kings finally on my TBR after years of years of years of avoiding it for absolutely no reason. But that definitely went on the list of things to read. Um, the rating for that is actually 4.66. The next thing was Heartstopper Volume 3. I read the previous one, so this was kind of perfect for me. Um, the next thing is The Full Metal Alchemist, and this is Volume 2. I wanted to not go into something that I've already seen the adaptation of, and I have seen Full Metal Alchemist multiple times. It wouldn't be beneficial for the experiment. My Sherlock Holmes collection thing, which I've read separate stories from, so I also don't want to include. And then we have Throne of Glass, and from the original um, footage of me deciding this, there's literally maybe like 10 minutes me going back and forth <laughs> thinking whether I'm gonna put myself through it or not. Not that I would necessarily dislike it, but I have stopped uh, in the middle of the third book of this series, I just I was not in the mood. I was not in the mood and I was like, oh, maybe do it for the YouTube. But you know what? I did not do it for the YouTube, so we're gonna skip that one as well. Thing. Maybe maybe this will be a completely different video of me trying to read the Throne of Glass again. Then we had One Punch Man, which also got disqualified due to the fact that I've seen the, ana um, the anime of it. Might have actually read this too, so um, my good reads is not the best kept platform. Um, and then we have Becoming by Michelle Obama, which is autobiography, and this I did have on my audiobook, and I thought, you know what, let's do non-fiction, because that's just not something that gets done in this channel a lot, and I thought it could be fun. So we put that bad boy on the list. The Return of the King is the third book in the Lord of the Rings series. Maybe again, this is gonna be a separate video at some point, um, but I also have read this before, so... Then I, then you can see there's Felix Ever After, but it wasn't there in February. Would have definitely put it on the list, however, this is a new new addition. Then there was Tokyo Ghoul, but I again started watching an anime instead. So we're gonna move on to Starsight, which did and uh, ended up being the fourth book in this experiment. Um, a Good Girl's Guide to Murder was um, super high at that point. Murder was 4.45. 
when I did this originally. So that is also on the on the agendas. So once again, we have a YA comic, uh, YA contemporary comic, um, YA mystery thriller, a YA sci-fi, an adult epic fantasy, and a adult non-fiction autobiography. And I thought that would be like a kind of an okay rain. Let's move on into the reading of them. <laughs> only started yesterday and I am already where am I like a hundred forty pages in I'm right here and I want to read more and like now <laughs> I think that's gonna be what I'm gonna do for the rest of the evening so I'm hoping this is gonna help like kind of kick sour because was, was another reason why I wanted to do this because I was like feeling like reading because I think this is what I needed hey guys so it's actually a couple of days later and I have finished A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I think pretty much as I expected it to fly by, it did. Um, did not want to put it down, and I didn't. I stayed up reading till like 2 a.m. in one night, and I devoured this book in two to three days, I think. Three, probably. Like, I had some non-reading days in between, but the pacing of this book is... It's so good. Every chapter we learn something towards the case. There's nothing kind of irrelevant and it's just so steady, which normally you would expect it to be a bit more like wee, you know, but it was so steady and it was so nice. And there's themes also addressed like race and everyday racism that like goes by unnoticed. Um, that was addressed pretty well, I think. And, um, there's also stuff, uh, some stuff about sexual assault, so that if you're a bit sensitive to that, it might be worth keeping in mind. But the whole book, did I even tell you? <laughs> the whole book is about this uh, girl who, had, who was in like last year of school and she picks a project to um, try and learn more about this murder that happened five years ago and it was a girl who she didn't really know but the guy who was said to be the killer was um someone that she considered a friend she like it wasn't a close friend but it was like a close acquaintance <laughs> can you have that and it just really didn't fit his whole profile so she's just wanting to check out more information about that and make it into her project and then she just goes all in and obviously she's not police so she doesn't have all the access and stuff so she's just gathering bit by bit um and like breaking all all of the ethics rules for the project <laughs> um and and endangering herself as well is really good i really enjoyed it it was so unputdownable and it's something that i needed for so long and i knew that ever since i started even before i started reading it for like this put it through copile but i'm def it's definitely a four star maybe a five star i don't know but i what i do know is that i really need to ne read more thrillers because whenever I do I love it so but I don't do it often but maybe that's why I love it as well I don't know but I really enjoyed it the ratings might be correct so far I'm really enjoying it I'm just excited to see what like Hopile brings it because I haven't done that as I said and I need to like put my thoughts together and get I don't I doubt that this is gonna be a book that I'm gonna keep thinking about but the whole experience with the atmosphere and yeah there were some like spookier bits and then I kept seeing shadows in my room so that was fun um definitely helped falling asleep um recommend okay well I have run this book through call pile and it was so hilarious because it just just hit like the first number that hits five stars is like straight up nine and it got a straight up nine and it's it's hilarious it's I think it's really cool it's my first five read five star read this year and um a very good start I think to this project because obviously this is supposed to kind of in tech like in theory yield some good books um I was not entirely sure if it's gonna 
be a five star because I don't know if I mentioned yesterday but pace was amazing for the most of the book but at the very end I felt like because there's a couple of resolutions actually which was a nice touch I think but I felt like they were all a little bit rushed considering how much time we took to get to that place I felt like it could have taken a little bit longer a bit more suspenseful a little bit more prolonged just at those very last scenes I wish there was a little bit more so this is very much like top of a four but five <laughs> the enjoyment was definitely in the five stars so that is definitely that and the intrigue is what is like really pushing this I cared about the characters it was just like not the main strength of the book but I don't think it was supposed to be if that makes sense so I have some other reading to do at the moment but I'm hoping to continue with this little project um later tomorrow maybe or maybe even today i think my next stop might be uh star side which is the continuations to skyward because i'm very happy with how quickly i read this and that one is a continuation as i said so i should be already kind of familiar with this with the world and it's brand centers and i like the first one and um i actually did flew through that one as well so i'm hoping to like continue momentum hello star side so skyward is a book or series now that focuses on this girl spencer who is uh, a daughter of a known traitor of this colony this is a planet where people humans live underground because they are afraid to be above ground for the fear that these alien ships keep attacking and bombing everything that's on the surface so they kind of adapted and they live underneath um spencer's live goal is to be a pilot same as her father who as I mentioned is known to be a traitor but she obviously knew her father and uh, her family knew her father and it just doesn't fit that he would be a traitor um, he was like very devoted and very trustworthy so she wants to be a pilot and prove everyone wrong but because of the way the system is, this is a sci-fi that I mentioned, <laughs> probably gathered that from the space talk, but because of the, how the system is, no one really wants her in the program because you have to trust the pilot and if the organization feels like, you know, like father, like daughter, and if you allow someone like not trustworthy in the team, the whole team might perish. So she stumbles across of an old ship that she's never seen before in any of her studies of ships because they obviously study that. Um, she can't recognize it and she kind of wants to revive it and every, everything kind of like starts happening from there on out and this and Starside is the second one in that because the first one kind of ended with this big like reveal and big plot twist and we are picking up where we left off uh, I am only in on page 24 <laughs> wow much reading has been done but I have pushed through the first two chapters because I don't know if you've seen my reading the first chapter challenge uh, the most recent one that I've done but I have learned big time that I do not like when books start with an action scene and this book started with an action scene but I know because I'm already familiar with the series or like the book and the world it wasn't as bad but also I don't care I just want to start the story let me breathe before you throw me into this like mixture of like action and flying and pew 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 and I just didn't care so hopefully now that I pushed past that I can continue on with it and find it a bit better um but I'll get back to you <laughs> I mean it's Brandon Sanderson so I'm expecting to like it but action not the biggest fan when that starts with it thankfully as i said this is not a new book for me because then that's even worse but just not a fan when the book starts with an action it's not a setting i like hello <laughs> so it's like weeks later and all the progress that i've done is in a book that does not relate to this project so i'm really really hoping that today at some point I'll have time to read this but I don't really have the motivation to pick it up so I might actually try and like get some momentum by reading The Heart Stopper 3 because obviously that's also part of it and also because next week I actually am going to the author's like talk here in Edinburgh so seems like a smart idea to do so I might do that in a little bit
welcome to everything hurts and I'm dying. I'm not, but welcome to day four of flu. <laughs> I'm feeling much better compared to what I felt before, but I'm still a hot mess and still very achy and just blah, which is very frustrating and I'll tell you why in a second, but... What? But I decided it would be a good idea. I'm just gonna go over it, you know what? Because I don't know the next time I'm gonna have like a break and stuff. I just wanted to do like a little mask and I want to wash my hair today because I am gross. The day that I got the flu was the day was I supposed to wash my hair either way, but obviously that didn't happen because the thought of water touching my skin, oof. <laughs> Which, as I said, is super annoying because one of the books that as I said I'm gonna read for this is Heartstopper 3 which is a chunk of. I actually had the tickets to go and see her for the talk of this. I'm gonna put like a little mud mask. Well, does this look like Nutella? <laughs> no, I can't. Cause I shouldn't go outside really and like spread my germs like a lot of people do because I am a responsible adult. <laughs> so reading update. I have read up until page 185 of Starside. It was kind of hard to get into it. It's good. It's definitely a little bit slow going, but I don't, I don't actually mind that as long as I like am invested in the characters or new thing I found or I'm curious about the characters because this book kind of takes Spencer out of her usual surroundings. I'm not gonna specify. Um, and we actually meet other species and this book like very slightly in a very mint kind of like subdued way reminded me of The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet which is one of my favorite books. The reason why that one is one of my favorite books is because it come it includes concepts of species and their kind of way of living and so uh, like philosophies that are very very different from human ones and I find that so interesting. It's one of my favorite things. It's something that I truly truly enjoy so much so I'm very excited to see it. So my, one of my favorite characters so far and like the species and everything that is explained Morimor. So Morimor is one of my... one thing that does annoy me though is um, I mean I'm, we're not supposed to like this character per se but Winzik Oh, what is my my and so aggressive, my my. It's so annoying to read. But that being said, I am really enjoying it. It's definitely like within like four stars kind of thing. And I think it's going to be similar to the first one. Um, although I know some people who prefer the first one, but so far I think I like this one better because of that species thing, because I just love it. I think it's just something that is, it's a mud jazz, you know, like I really love it. I can feel this drawing. So I should probably stop talking. Hello, welcome to day 10 of the flu. She's wearing a tiny bit of makeup. She also has conjunctivitis. <laughs> this thing is very persistent and does not want to leave my body. But anyway, I'm on page 278, so I'm just gonna start chapter 27 here. There has been a little bit of like kind of repetitiveness in part three. It's basically a lot of training and getting to know the environment and stuff like that which is not a bad thing but it is quite repetitive at times um i don't mind it i thankfully sat and read like the last 80 pages or something um in the same evening although i think if i kept putting this down this could potentially lose momentum fairly quickly so, which is surprising because the first book was so like you know action 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 so it's going well so far i would say like high three or four stars so far. So I finished the star side. <laughs> Took me a while. I'm about to go ahead and uh, do the coal pile rating for this. Okay, so yeah, it ended up being four stars like I thought. So um, I think atmosphere and the writing were the strongest parts and the enjoyment overall. I gave uh, atmosphere nine and 8.5 to both writing and enjoyment. Then I gave the lowest point, which is still not low, is a seven for logic, just because I think a couple of things were a bit of a stretch or done for the plot itself. Like um, the whole Delver situation at the end, I felt like, I don't know, it was a bit, I, don't, I can't say without spoiling it. It was just like, it was nothing massive, but I was just like, okay, that's okay. <laughs> um, and uh, there was also a lot of uh, very convenient 
bits. Then both plot and entry got 7.5. It was just like good, not like brilliant. And it all came down to an equal even 8, which is a 4 star. So that is now done. Hi, so I've just finished Heartstopper Volume 3 which I think was like at the very top of the Goodreads rating, at least at the moment that I checked it, which is now like months ago. Um, it's cute, it's on the same probably level as the first and second one, I will probably rate it. I don't know if I'm gonna rate it three stars now, but it's not worse than the first two, which I did rate four stars with, but it is very much the same kind of thing. It's just your calm, cute, romance with this is the least subtle thing I've read is just okay I think it was very cute that that is sure as hell was and it's accepting and like warm and heartwarming for sure is it good though it depends who's reading <laughs> um was it worthwhile for the cuteness yes did I learn anything like not even in the slightest but I think I'm not the target audience for this I don't know I feel like this is a little bit overhyped but I also think that this is very much needed for, you know, just to be available for people, especially younger ones. And it is very cute. I am reading Michelle Obama's book now and I am listening to it because she is the one that narrates it as well. And I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, it's very insightful. It's very um, well written. I am audiobooking it and I have 16 and a half hours left. It's so far it's just about her life and it just kind of jumps a little bit but it's kind of starting from her age, like from her young age. So I'm currently about like young teens and it's interesting. It's interesting. A little bit in but definitely still have a lot left. Yeah, 16 and a half hours. And the only other thing that I need to read from my TBR then is The Way of Kings, which I'm going to start probably tomorrow. So I might catch up with you then, but I'm back. <laughs> Although for you, it's obviously not gonna be. Anyway, you know what I mean. <laughs> Found another gaping hole <laughs> into the vlog, which I'm so upset about because I think it was one of my favorite clips from um, the vlog. And I'm so gutted that that's the one that the computer ate hope it was tasty. <laughs> Basically it was me updating you on the book Becoming and um, I was crying in the kitchen. <laughs> I was cutting vegetables and crying because I was listening to the book and there's a particular part where she speaks about a particular loss she experienced um, within her family. I don't want to really say it. I mean it's not a spoiler of someone's life but I still don't want to specify just in case you're um, considering picking it up which I would highly recommend because I ended up giving it five stars. I enjoyed it from cover to cover and I don't really normally go for autobiographies and the couple that I have read were nothing exciting for me but this one was so insightful, so beautifully written and so beautifully narrated. I just, I really enjoyed it. I, um, it's obviously a little bit different rating someone's autobiography because it's not like I am not just about to sit and rate somebody's life for plot <laughs> you know I thought it was a very interesting perspective especially because how many people can actually talk about being the first lady um, in America and all the first black president literally no one else but her oh especially because she was a person that did not want to have anything to do with it anything. But even besides of the presidency part, I thought I really enjoyed her life story. There was a lot of talk about motherhood, so if that's a topic that interests you, you might enjoy it even more because it's not a topic that interests me. But even then, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. So that's that book done. Five stars. Really, really recommend uh, picking up the audiobook especially. If you know any other autobiographies that you think are really good, please let me know because I would be... I would be excited to read more. So, I am here to update you on this. However, do I have a lot to update you on? No. Um, I did manage to, however, read 40... Wow! 40 pages of this. And the reason why I'm going that slowly as well is that this book now is the book that I think I mentioned is everybody's favorite. Well, ev a lot of people who are very important in my life, favorite. I will preface this that I still expect myself to fall in love with the series. I still expect this to be amazing. However, it just so happens to have at the beginning pretty much everything that I don't like. I read the little bit that's like a prelude. Sorry, it's a prelude. And then you have prologue. 
And then after the prologue, you have five years later, eight months later. <laughs> so there's a lot of like leading up bits and they're all from like different perspectives, which I usually take some time to warm up to. The thing that we learned in the video of me reading the first chapters was that I just don't like it when books start with an action scene. And this book and series is massive, so 40 pages is not even a drop in a sea, it's just like a, a splinter in a sea. Sure. So again, I'm not judging it, but it, as a slower e reader, <laughs> um, it takes me a little while to get through those 40 pages, especially if it's something I'm not really enjoying or it's not something that's like grabbing my attention. But I am determined. I am determined. I can't tell you what this book is about yet because I don't know. But I am determined to do some reading today, although I am really struggling with brain time in general. Um, I am determined to attempt at reading and hopefully next time that I see you I will have somewhat of an update. Hopefully it's not a month later. Several months later. Hello! Um, I'm not trying to see <laughs> this project, I swear. So it's the 2nd of August. Um, I keep postponing this because I keep wanting to like put a proper time for this book and then other things keep coming up and I don't know if I, one, updated you for where I am and two, actually found that clip in the midst of other clips because it's months now. Did finish on page 110, <laughs> still a lot to go. Um, as I, I think I mentioned about the fight scenes and everything, um, I'm getting a little bit more interested in Kaladin side of things. Not so much about Shalon yet, um, but Kaladin I like, although every time we get closer to another person, the person dies. So I'm really looking forward to when we actually have other characters to care about as well. I wish the sprint would talk a little bit more as well, but I'm excited that that exists. I'm excited to continue and learn a bit more about everyone and actually, you know, make some progress. That would be great. <laughs> so far, I've also learned that they have marble money, which is what I'd like to think about them. Um, and in the, in the said marble money, they have a little bit of some type of crystal, which is very vibes. It's not a secret, I like crystals, I have them right there. Um, and those crystals obviously that vary in size and in kind and um, the ability to store the stormlight in. And I thought it was really fun for uh, um, currency. So obviously they're not called marble, but that is what I call it because I have terrible memory. Oh my god, I had to I got had to put the camera on and film this little bit because I'm watching uh Brandon Sanderson interview um that Daniel Green did and it's so good. I'm really enjoying it. Um but he said something that literally was my critique and I'm so happy that he mentioned that. I feel very validated. <laughs> okay. You don't want to do what you do I did in the Stormlight Archive and have four false beginnings or three false beginnings before you get to your actual story, right? <laughs> That's just really self-indulgent and it worked. Okay, actually he went on to say that it works for an epic, but it wouldn't work the same. I think he was talking about Skyward actually. But regardless, I feel like it's nice that he mentioned that and you know. Um, speaking of, oh I don't have the book near my in myself, but I am actually pretty far along. I look like such a mess, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know why I apologize. I take that back. That we shouldn't apologize for how we look like. Anyway. Um, I'm on like page 350 or something. I'm way into the second half of the book. I'm really enjoying it. I do really want to continue on. Uh, having an audiobook really helps but would definitely recommend only listening when you already kind of know the characters because otherwise it would be whew. But um, it's good that I can have that flexibility because it's such a tome obviously. I would um, like to continue when I'm not physically reading and obviously I'm still reading other things on the side so it's not as focused but I'm really enjoying it so far. Hello, oh my god, it is uh, 23rd of September <laughs> and I have finally finished The Way of Kings. I actually have finished this a couple of days ago but I have done it. As you know my thoughts from the beginning, later on it does get better but I still, I feel like this is still a 600 page book of just a beginning. This is and Technically, it kind of is if you lined up all of the books. How many are there gonna be? Seven, eleven? I don't know. Many books, and if you lined it up and they're like massive, this would then technically be like the beginning. 
and it felt like it it felt like the beginning and if you enjoyed that that would be amazing i don't like beginnings and i also don't particularly love swapping between povs i will say there's not many here so it didn't it didn't bother me that much but um i don't like it in between the chapters the, the book is split into like four parts i think or three parts in a particular part you will have a couple of povs but they're not necessarily the same povs that are going to be in the next chapter so i kind of prefer if they just kept either all POVs or just less POVs, but I love to be immersed in one story and then not be thrown into another. Kaladin was my absolute favorite, something that Shalon did at the end there, like really pissed me off, what I'm sure everyone agrees. <laughs> um, I'm really excited to read on and I feel like now that I've, I, this did feel a little bit like work for me, it did feel like learning. Um, and I know, like I normally love to learn, but not in books, because this is where my, um, like, relaxing, this is my relaxy time. Um, so when I feel like I'm learning, or I feel like I have to put like a lot of effort, that doesn't really do it for me, that's not what I'm here for, unless it's like a self-bettering kind of book, but this is the, the adult fantasy is not why I read that. But now that I feel like I put in the work, I really want to continue and I really did enjoy it. Brennan Sanderson's writing I do really like, but I don't think that it's the best writing ever. I think it is fairly repetitive. I think the prose is, yeah, repetitive and pretty simple. And I think this, the, even the sentence structure is very noticeably the same kind of like going forward and normally it's fine sometimes it just bugs me a little bit especially when there is a big fight scene because there are some details that I just feel like are kind of uh, redundant like we don't always need to know every inch of like every movement but um, I was a little bit afraid that there's gonna be a lot of fight scenes because I have been kind of told that before but actually it was a pretty reasonable amount I was not overwhelmed and I was not bored um, some of the characters there was there are these kind of preludes where the, you have like three little chapters of completely different characters that don't have main POV lines at least in this book those I could not just wait to get over with because again it just feels like I feel such a disconnect whenever there's like a big jump as a reader I like apparently I really like linear stuff like or not linear but I like to be invested and not having to reinvest you know maybe that just makes me a selfish reader I don't know but that is just my preference however those are the things that I wear like kind of bugging me a little bit I guess or like just not just my little quirms you know with the with the book but that being said things that I loved from this is that you always feel like things are leading somewhere I never felt personally that whenever I read anything even if the detail kind of feels random I always have this faith and I don't know if it's because of the previous books I've read by him but I always have this faith in him that I know this is important. I'm not just like going through the stage just for shits and giggles. I know that there's going to be something that relays back to this later on in the book and that is going to be important to the story. And um, the world building, I love it. <laughs> um, I feel like this author always builds the world in a way that I could, I could wake him up in 3 a.m. in the morning, just like call in, just be like, hey, and I could give him like the most ridiculously detailed question about something in his world and he could tell me, you know? I feel like, I think I gave a 10 in logic for in the, in the copile scheme because I was, like I just have a feeling that everything makes sense even if I don't understand it yet. Um, and I love that about the book because it makes me trust the process, it makes me trust the book. I can just go ahead and get lost in the, get lost. <laughs> In the book, I mean, I can just go ahead and get lost in the story, not wondering like, oh, wait, that didn't really make sense because I just have a feeling and you feel like you're in the world. Like the world didn't start when you started reading the book. You know how sometimes some books feel like, was this even a thing before you opened the page? Does that make sense? Like some of the books sometimes to me feel like the world is just there for you to experience but in here it feels like the world is there regardless or not if I'm reading this or not like it's there it feels this real um so I really love that about and uh there are some characters that I really adored granted not the majority for <laughs> and now but I know because of my friends that there are gonna be some stuff in the future that I'm definitely going to get more attached to the characters that I don't particularly care about now but obviously I'm judging this one and even then if even if I didn't like you know lay my life for some of these characters I still enjoyed 
majority of it. I kind of struggled a little bit with um, intrigue here and I think it is because it's such a big build-up. The rest of the series I definitely see why people say oh you shouldn't start with this if you're new to Sanderson you not start with it. But overall it actually still got really high points. Um, it was four stars however not five and it came to 8.07 which is which is a four star. It's not is it is it very high way? No, it's kind of it's kind of middle. It's that concludes the last book, according to February's ratings of these books. The highest one was four point seven one, and that was actually Heartstopper Volume Three. This was a three star. And I understand though. I understand. <laughs> I understand that this book is really cutesy and I think I is definitely me not you kind of thing. This doesn't mean that you cannot enjoy this at any age but for me personally I feel like this would have been a much bigger hit with me um, in my teens um, and I just feel I feel like it just got a bit repetitive and I don't know if it's because it was repetitive or because this didn't stand on itself on its own as much but I was just not really feeling it and but I again I totally get it like I get it <laughs> but as we saw it currently still had a very high rating it's still at 4.66 so even though it went down a tiny bit from 7.1 I think it was super high because it was around the release time um when I first started this um, and the longer it goes, I think, obviously, the, the, the average would usually go down. One could argue that it, I am not the targeted audience, and that is not incorrect. However, obviously, I also think that anyone can read anything and still get stuff from it. But it wouldn't be incorrect. I don't think I am the targeted audience for this, and... But I did enjoy the first... Anyway, <laughs> moving on. I, I think on that one, I would say that it's not... It's not correct for me, which is obviously what this video is about. Then the next book on the list was The Way of Kings with 4.67 at that time. Um, and for me, it was a medium 4 star. So the overall ratings are a little bit higher because 4.5... 4, 4.6 is more so closer to <laughs> a very strong 4 star. However, it's not miles off at all. Back then, the third one was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I cannot believe I gave this four, five stars. It's so weird because obviously when comparing something like this, it's a completely different standard, I feel, um, for me to rate it on. But I, I take that into consideration. Did I, did I get from the book what I normally wanted to get from the book? Um, when I picked this up, I expect very different things from when I pick this up. I pick this up when I want something kind of fun and intriguing and hard to put down. I pick this up when I want something epic, also obviously intriguing, but in a very different way. This this is more so like, ooh, who, who's done the crime? And this is more so like, I would, who's going to survive and who's going to, you know, not <laughs> in this wild world and how things work. This just gave me such a good time. Like now it feels like it was such a long time ago because it was. I just, I couldn't put it down. It was so easy to read. The next one was Becoming at, at 4.5. Point five, and um, I gave this one five stars as well, I think. And then the last one is the Skyward one. I how strong was the four star? The tiny bit, tiny bit lower than the Way of Kings, um, which again is such a different story. It's such a different four star in my mind, but um, it's because they are in a different category. I actually enjoyed this one much more than the first book actually. So all of these books were one of the higher rated books that I've read this year. So I'd say that overall I kind of can't trust Goodreads. I think I just need to remember to go more so into the categories that I would normally enjoy so I don't self-sabotage which I've done a little bit with this I think because I think I just need to filter through the categories that I would enjoy. Um, obviously that's not gonna always be the case but it's it's kind of like it's kind of reassuring to know that some that hopefully the ratings of the books that I see on Goodreads is reflective to the quality of the book. Obviously I think the more the ratings the more ratings you have the more so um, representative the average is going to be. It's good to know that there is merit to the number and it's not just kind of like 
you know. <laughs> what about you though guys? Do you find that the average rating of the book that you read usually matches with your opinion or it doesn't? Do you think it would be fun to do this experiment with uh, your own bookshelves or TBRs and have you maybe already? And if so, were your results different? Because I feel like for me the conclusion is that I can, in most cases, trust the average Goodreads rating as long as it's within a category within a genre of a book that I would normally have a better chance of enjoying because of my personal preferences which makes sense so I don't know <laughs> if this was um I don't know if this was like a little bit of a dumb video to make now in retrospect but you know what it's done so it's fine um but yeah I think that wraps it up oh my god it actually wrapped up wow did not I at some point I did kind of lose hope <laughs> that we're finishing this but we did it um i hope you guys i hope you guys are well let me know if you enjoyed this video i will chat to you down in the comments i thank you so much for watching stay awesome stay kind and i'll see you in the next one bye